Let's add one more layer of strategy to this unit's work by adding in something that allows us to have functionality be repeated automatically based off of a scheduled timer. You'll see that in my files right now, I've actually taken my file write class from the previous project and pulled it over here because I want to be able to do some file writing in this project and you'll have to for your project. So I'm just going to pull mine over right now so it's available for me to use. But for now, I'm going to import two other libraries, time and threading. Time allows us to access the system clock and information about what time it actually is in the real world. And threading allows me to have processes work kind of asynchronously from one another so that I'm able to have logic processing in one capacity, but also in another one, almost like uh, multitasking what's going on. So I don't have to, so kind of like while one thing is being processed, other things can be done at the same time but separately. So the one thing's not waiting on the other. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna get my writer set up. I get my file writer. Oops, I mistyped there. And my file writer, oh, I didn't import it yet from file write, import file write. And this is just a file write, not a file writer. So let's get my file write set up properly. Good stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a method. This method is gonna be called um, perform task. And I should keep isn't working very well. Yeah, it seems to be letting go here. Hmm. Well, what I'm going to be doing in here is simply just printing out a message to begin with. Uh, I performed my task. And what I want to enable here is the ability for this task to be performed over and over again on a schedule. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into my threading functionality and I'm going to select this timer. And inside it, I just have a couple things that I need to set up. The first variable, the first parameter, is the amount of time I want to pass. I'm going to put in one for one second right now. And the second one is the name of the method that I want this timer to call when it's run. So I'm basically queuing up some functionality to run. And what I want to do is actually call my perform task. Now, I'm actually not going to call it like a method. I'm just saying its name inside of my class. So it's a bit different than we're used to how we're referencing content. I'm just doing it by the name of the actual task itself without an actual direct call because it's not going to be called immediately. I'm queuing it up to be called after a second. And I'm going to start this timer. So whenever perform task is run, it's going to print out a message and then it's going to queue up in another thread in one second, call the perform task I guess it's a function in this context. And I want you to start thinking about this. And so I need to kind of set this all off in the first place by saying, hey, I just want you to perform task. And let's see what occurs in my code here. I perform my task. It's happening once every second. Very cool. So what does this threading actually mean? How can we see evidence of how this is actually working? Well, something I can do here is I'm just gonna make a simple loop while true, I want my data to be an input of uh, maybe uh, type type in some value. And we'll see here kind of what's going to be going on. I have the type in some value kind of sitting there, but I'm performing my task alongside it. Now I can like hit type in a key and press enter. And then the type in a va some value happens again because then the loop is, is kind of queued up or it's repeated. So the type in some value is repeated and it's waiting for me to hit enter to uh, enter some value and then it asks me to type in a value again. So I've actually taken in the input, but while I'm waiting for more input, this task is still ongoing. It's set. It's a separate piece of processing that's happening that I have happening simultaneously. Now this console based output gets pretty messy when I'm actually printing out the task I'm performing alongside accepting user input. So this is not normally something that we would be kind of doing printing out the task but I could have something going on in the background that could be uh, performing some functionality. For example, maybe something that I could do here uh, will look a little bit like this. So here's a quick reminder of something that we can do in Python is create a variable that's global. So I'm gonna create a num that's global. So I've defined it. Oh, I wanna call it num. Thank you, Python. And this now means that it's accessible inside this function, but also outside of it as well. And what I'm going to have this task do is every time it runs, I want you to increase the value of num by one. 
when I'm actually running the program, I'm going to start by setting num to zero. And what I'm going to do when I'm processing through this data is I'm going to say, um, if my data equals the, uh, the number one pressed in, I'm going to print out the value of num. So I'm going to allow myself to check in on how num has updated over time by running this here. So it's performing the task and it's waiting for some value to be input in its messy interface. And if I type in one, seven, if I type in one now, 10, type in a bunch of times in a row really fast. You'll see it's 13 a few times because I typed it enough times within a second, but now that time has gone by and I can see that now it's 20 seconds has elapsed. So I have the ability to have this counting going on asynchronously from my other functionality, which is pretty useful. And there's some cases where we might want to use this. And something that you might find really helpful in a program that you make and a challenge to come is to be able to set up a timer to query a new web scrape every so often. Maybe you want to query a new web scrape every hour or every minutes or every second, depending on what kind of type of data you're trying to get. Now, do know that some information on sites won't change um, from second to second. So it would be completely wasteful to query it at, on a second rate. But what if you had a program that you just ran in the background of your computer that would trigger, well, let's pull up a calculator here. We have 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day. So this many seconds would be once a day. It would query this new task, which could potentially gather new data, write it to a file, update something for you. So each day you have fresh data pulled in. All I have to do is just leave this program running on in the background and you'll be able to get that data live. So here's where our file write stuff could come in handy here. I'm just going to get rid of this for now and let's get rid of all my num stuff. Just an example there. What about instead of printing out, I perform my task. What if I do something a little bit different? I've already created this writer up here. What if I take my writer and I write a string to file as we built previously, let's call this output.txt. And what I'm gonna do with this is finally use this time functionality. So I'm gonna create a string of some information in my time. And I have this functionality called C time, which is actually gonna give me a representation of time in kind of a date time format. And I know kind of in advance that this is all going to be on the same line and how this function works, unless I also append or concatenate to it a new line at the end. So I'm just kind of creating the, the information. I'm outputting a string with a concatenated new line at the end. And now when I run this, it says type in some value, but every second that this program is running, it's actually querying. Let's see where I got this file here. I'll just do this. Let's open up my, uh, short explorer pathway, go into my web scraper, and I see I have this output file that I can pop open here. And we'll see that I have some entries that have been saved once per second, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way down the date and time here. Notice it ends at line 17. Stuff has been going on since I opened it. And so now I'm going to close it and open it again. And I should see that more information has been added since in the time that's ticking by. So I'm actually creating a time stamped record of my live program. And there's a lot of software that works just like this, where every certain amount of time it's running, it actually records some information. Right now it's just the time, but you could record information from a website. What's the news headline? You could append it on the side here, concatenate it to the end here. At this time and date on this website, what was the headline or what was the value of a stock or what was the top tweet from an individual? You can start to curate your own massive database of information that you curate and present in a way that you're happy with. And it slowly accumulates over time in a format that you like and with content that you have curated and selected and automated to be populated and organized. Oh, wants me to update it here in your own way. In the next and probably final video, I will go over a few strategies that might help you out getting set up to think through this project.